Tony Collette. Australian actress. Tony Collette is an Australian actress. Known for her work in television and independent films, she has received various accolades, including a Golden Globe Award, a Primetime Emmy Award, and five AACTA Awards, with nominations for an Academy Award and a Tony Award. Born, November 1, 1972, age 51 years, Blacktown, Australia. Spouse, Dave Galafassi, M. 2003. Children, Sage Florence Galafassi. Height, 1.73 meters. Parents, Judy Collette, Bob Collette. Siblings, Ben Collette, Christopher Collette. Tony Collette is an Academy Award nominated Australian actress, best known for her roles in The Sixth Sense, 1999, and Little Miss Sunshine, 2006. Collette was born Tony Collett, she later added an E, on November 1, 1972, in Blacktown, Sydney, New South Wales, Australia. She is the first of three children of Judith, Cook, a customer service representative, and Bob Collett, a truck driver. From age six, she was brought up in suburban Sydney. At the age of 11, she showed her phenomenal acting skills when she faked appendicitis out of boredom and longing for attention. Her act was so convincing that doctors had to remove her appendix, even though the test showed nothing was wrong with it. At 16, she left school and enrolled in the National Institute of Dramatic Arts, NIDA. At that time, she was a struggling actress, supporting herself by delivering pizzas. After 18 months of studies, she left Nita for her feature film debut as Wendy Robinson, opposite Russell Crowe and Anthony Hopkins, in The Efficiency Expert, 1991, and earned herself a nomination for Best Supporting Actress from the Australian Film Institute. Colette made her stage debut with the Sydney Theatre Company, as Sonia in Anton Chekhov's Uncle Vanya, a performance that won her a Critics Circle Award as Best Newcomer. She also appeared in stage productions at the Belvoir Street Theatre, under directorship of Geoffrey Rush. In 1994, she won the Australian Best Actress in a lead role for her work in Muriel's Wedding, 1994, for which she had to gain 40 pounds in seven weeks. In 1995, Tony Collette came to Hollywood with a supporting role in The Pallbearer, 1996, then had a string of supporting roles. Her first lead as Diana Spencer, an Australian woman who shares the name and birthday of Princess Diana, in the comedy, Diana and Me, 1997, was obscured by the real Diana's death, which practically occurred at the same time when the movie was released. Her breakthrough came with the role as Lynn Sear in The Sixth Sense, 1999, for which she quite rightly won an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress in a Supporting Role. Her latest memorable role as Cheryl, a beaten-down but loving mother, in Little Miss Sunshine, 2006, is also a fine ensemble work with Abigail Breslin, Greg Kinnear, Steve Carell, Paul Dano, and Alan Arkin. Since 2003, Tony Collette has been married to musician Dave Galafassi, with whom she recorded her singing and songwriting debut album, titled Beautiful Awkward Pictures, in 2006. She co-owns an independent production company in Australia, and also continues her music career as a singer. Tony resides with her husband in Sydney, Australia, and owns a second home in Ireland. Family Spouse Dave Galafassi, January 11, 2003, present, filed for divorce, two children. Children Arlo Robert Galafassi Sage Florence Galafassi Parents Judith Collett, Cook Bob Collett Relatives Ben Collett, sibling. Christopher Collett, sibling. Trademarks. Red hair. Australian accent. Fluent American accent. Frequently plays mothers. Trivia. As of 2014, has appeared in three films that were nominated for the Best Picture Oscar, The Sixth Sense, 1999, The Hours, 2002, and Little Miss Sunshine, 2006. Gained 40 pounds in seven weeks for Muriel's wedding, 1994, with the help of a dietitian.
was five months pregnant with her son Arlo when she completed filming on the third series of United States of Terra, 2009. Tony sings with her band, called The Finish, and her husband, Dave Galafassi, is the drummer. On the show Who Do You Think You Are? 2008, Tony discovered that her biological paternal grandfather was likely an American serviceman with whom her grandmother, Norma Ruby, McQuinney, had had a relationship, while ending her marriage to Tony's legal grandfather, Harold Stanley Collett. As of the show's airing in 2015, Tony did not know the name of her biological grandfather, and at the end of the episode, Tony showed a picture of the man and asked the public if anyone can recognize him. Though she vowed not to gain any more weight for movie roles, director Curtis Hansen convinced her to gain 25 pounds for her role in In Her Shoes, 2005. She believed it was important to her character's personality. She has shaved her head five times. Only once for a film though.81 Half Women, 1999. Dropped out of Australia's NIDA, National Institute of Dramatic Arts, in order to make her first film The Efficiency Expert, 1991. Is just 15 years older than Haley Joel Osment, who played her son in The Sixth Sense, 1999. Played the mother for both Haley Joel Osment and Abigail Breslin in their Oscar nominated roles, The Sixth Sense, 1999, and Little Miss Sunshine, 2006. Is only 11 years older than Paul Dano, who plays her son in Little Miss Sunshine, 2006. Despite playing her older sister in In Her Shoes, 2005, Colette is actually nine weeks younger than Cameron Diaz in real life. For her portrayal in The Black Balloon, 2008, as Maggie, a mother who uses sign language to communicate with her son who has autism and a condition now known as selective mutism, she learned more words and phrases in sign language than the script called for so that she could improvise and also give more complete meaning to things her character said when signing with Luke Ford, who also learned how to sign some words and phrases to portray Charlie, the son with autism. Nominated for a 2000 Tony Award for her performance as Queenie in Michael John Lachis's musical, The Wild Party, on Broadway. Returned to work three months after giving birth to her son Arlo, to begin filming Mental, 2012. Strenuously campaigned for the role of Mrs. Lovett in Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street, 2007, but ultimately lost it to Helena Bonham Carter was romantically linked to actor Jonathan Rhys Myers while the pair played a couple in Velvet Goldmine, 1998. Tony and her Connie and Carla, 2004, co-star, Mia Vardalos, have the same full first name, Antonia. Has portrayed the caregiver of young adults with autism in two films, as Maggie Mollison, the mother, and primary caregiver within the family, of a son with autism in The Black Balloon, 2008, and as Scotty, the group home primary caregiver of a young woman with autism in Please Stand By, 2017. Member of the jury at the Ken Film Festival, in 2007. Gave birth to her daughter, Sage Florence Galafassi, by her husband Dave Galafassi, on January 9, 2008. Gave birth to her son, Arlo Robert Galafassi, with husband Dave Galafassi, in Australia, April 22, 2011. Performs Throw Your Arms Around Me, Don't Dream It Over and Stand By Me in the film, Cosi, 1996. In 2015, Kate Winslet has said she would like to work with Colette. On the set of United States of Terra, 2009, in which she portrays a person with personality disorder, she once breastfed her three-months-old daughter, fully dressed as her male identity buck. Returned to work nine months after giving birth to her daughter Sage in order to begin filming Mary and Max, 2009. Is occasionally mistaken for singer-songwriter Annie Lennox. Starred as Sonia in the Sydney Theatre Company's 1992 production of Anton Chekhov's Uncle Vanya. Shares her birth date, November 1, 1972, with actress Jenny McCarthy Wahlberg. Born on a Wednesday at 11.14 a.m. Quotes. I'm an actor, not a movie star. I prefer it that way. I think when you watch big stars on screen, it's really difficult to look beyond that very familiar persona. As an actor, you can play different characters and not be recognized. I know I've got parts that other bigger, more famous actors wanted. I think in some cases their fame is a hindrance, because they're too identifiable. 
I'm very happy with my lot. I like the variety I get. You don't want to spend your life repeating yourself. It's true of any kind of artist, you want to explore as wide and far as you can go, so that's what I've been trying to do. My family, my relationships with my friends, my home and my music are the most important things in my life. I like being married, but it was never something I felt I had to do. Women in the States seem to think I gotta meet a man, I gotta get married. I don't get that, I was getting on with my life and having a great time. I really did not expect to meet my husband and it was probably the best surprise of my life. It is everything, it's fun, comforting, it makes me feel so safe and centered. I don't know that I want to do it forever. When it gets too much, I just walk the beaches of Sydney and get calm again. You just grab your surfboard, splash in those waves, and feel happy to be alive. That's what really matters. I find it strange that actors are on the covers of magazines. When I watch a movie, someone's beauty isn't what engages me, it's what's going on internally. And I imagine it's what the audience thinks, too. The better you know yourself, the better your relationship with the rest of the world. Sometimes life hits you on the head with a saucepan. But I'm not here to talk about saucepans. Traveling's so much better when you know you've got a lovely home to go back to. I can just enjoy it for what it is, without depending on it too much. I've always been a working actor. Big difference. I'm not interested in promoting myself or being famous. Don't get me wrong, I like getting tables at restaurants that have been booked out for months. But I don't want people to identify with me instead of the character I'm playing. On horror films, the only time I watched them was at sleepovers as a teenager. I have such a vivid imagination and I don't need to feed it with that kind of stuff. But something specific to both The Sixth Sense and Hereditary is that they are not solely horror films. They are beautiful portrayals of something really deep, and that makes them more complex, more interesting, and probably scarier. Speaking to Deadline about intimacy coordinators and how she doesn't always think they are necessary. I have to say, in a couple of scenes and different various jobs, I have been offered an intimacy coordinator. But I have felt so connected and safe with my creative partners that the intimacy coordinator felt like they were encroaching upon the process, and I denied them access to the actual scene because I didn't feel like I needed them. Salaries Hostages, 2013, $100,000 per episode, 2013 to 2014. The Sixth Sense, 1999, $1 million. Thank <laughs> you.